So today we discuss uh, pre-mature rupture of membranes. Uh, this could should be quite easy, having discussed preterm premature rupture of membranes. So by definition, uh, premature rupture of membranes is a rupture of membranes beyond 37 weeks gestation age and before the onset of labor. Um, and like we did uh, for uh, preterm premature rupture of membranes, you have to take a history from this patient. And um, the history that we have to take, we have to make sure that we get a history of any, uh, how the fluid started, was it a gush, was it just fluid dripping from the vagina? Um, we have to get a history of, um, was the draining associated with blood? Uh, which could be uh, abrupt show setting in, was the draining associated with a, re a reduced uh, fetal movements. That is also something that can happen as a complication of abrupt show after um, rupture of, um, of membranes. Um, so after we take that history, and again, like we did in PPROM, we have to um, do a sterile speculum exam. And from the sterile speculum exam, uh, there are several things that we are looking for. We are looking at the characteristic of Lycoa. What's the color? Is it meconium stained? Um, is it uh, foul smelling? Uh, is there bleeding after the rupture of membranes? Um, is there um, a cord that is... Um, that is there after the rupture of membrane. So these uh, things are things that we have to look for from speculum. And then we have to look for pooling of um, like when the posterior phonics or even uh, like are coming uh, from uh, the cervical os. So after we verify the diagnosis uh, of um, draining, we know that this woman is draining, we have to uh, verify the dates. So this is usually done in the history, of course, that we have to verify the dates. Is she really 37 weeks? So we use a gestation age. Is she sure about her dates? Uh, in verifying the dates, we usually look at whether um, her menses were regular, whether she's been on contraception, whether she's breastfeeding. All these things make um, uh, the last normal menstrual period uh, dates uh, unreliable. Then we can look at her first trimester scan. Is the scan that was done in the first trimester, uh, by that scan, what is her gestation age? If she did a second trimester scan, we have to look at uh, the bipyrite diameter as a reliable parameter for determining her gestation age. We know that a third trimester scan is unreliable. Of course, if we do a scan when she comes, um, that we can look at the... Um, weight of the fetus that is important an estimated weight of the fetus we can also look at the lycra volume as this has a bearing on the management of labor if the lycra volume is reduced there's a increased risk of cord compression and fetal distress um, during labor the other thing we have to look at to <clears throat> manage um, somebody who comes in with tempro is just determining um, how long they've been draining. If they've been draining for <clears throat> less than 24 hours, we usually would manage these patients conservatively. And the reason we do that um, is that um, if somebody has been draining for less than 24 hours, we know that um, draining can be a sign of labor. We know how labor is defined. We define labor as dilatation, effacement of the cervix, uh, contractions, and uh, plus or minus rupture of membranes and show. So we see that rupture of membranes can be a, a sign of labor. So that patient might be in labor. So we want to give them time to see if labor can become established. And we also know that 90% of patients who come with uh, draining at term usually would go into labor within um, 24 hours. That's the other reason we are just waiting to see if they go into labor within 24 hours because we want to avoid any unnecessary interventions. The other reason we wait uh, for this 24 hours is that um, 
the risk of infection within 24 hours of the start of draining a term is, is really small. It's about 20% as opposed to uh, draining that lasts for more than uh, 48 hours. The risk of infection in that case goes up to um, even 40%. Uh, uh, so that is the list of reasons why we don't want to, to uh, intervene before 24 hours elapses. Uh, so in this 24 hours, we are just observing the vitals, temperature, pulse, uh, respiratory rate. Um, we are avoiding unnecessary VEs because we are increasing the risk of infection if we uh, keep doing unnecessary VEs. And um, yeah, we are watching and seeing if the contractions get uh, established. So that is how we uh, we manage um, uh, this stem prom within 24 hours. If there are other comorbidities, uh, if a patient is diabetic, of course, if a patient is hypertensive, of course, you don't want to, to wait uh, for that 24 hours. You can just induce labor within the 24 hours if there is um, no contraindication for induction. And you can do a caesarean section if there's a contraindication for induction of labor. So then if um, this patient does not go into established labor after 24 hours, then we have to induce uh, the labor in this patient. So we do uh, digital vaginal exam now because this is beyond 24 hours now. Then uh, we do a bishop score then we decide what mode of uh, induction to use, whether to use misoprostol uh, or whether to use oxytocin from the start. If um, the bishop score is good, uh, that is a bishop score of mm, seven and above, then we just um, uh, induce the labor with uh, oxytocin. If the bishop score is poor, we have to improve the bishop score by starting with um, misoprostol. So misoprostol, can be given uh, orally or um, vaginally, but I see that in our labor, as most people would like, uh, would prefer giving um, oral misoprostol in somebody who's who's draining. Maybe because we don't want to have um, increase the risk of infection, and maybe the second reason is that if the draining is copious, uh, people feel that the misoprostol will be washed. Um, out from from the vagina then the last bit is uh, antibiotics so uh, antibiotics we really do not give in somebody who comes with temporal unless they have a prolonged rupture of membranes meaning that a patient has been has come to us and the rupture of membranes has been there for more than 24 hours so for those patients we would usually give antibiotics we give um, amoxil and flagyl and uh, if there's a no amoxyl and flag, you would give um, erythromycin until uh, the patient delivers. Uh, in labor, we need to monitor um, fetal heart closely uh, because uh, if the lyco is reduced, then there's risk of um, cord compression. Uh, we need to look out for infection when the baby is born because um, membranes were ruptured. There's a risk of um, a neonatal sepsis, and also there's a risk of um, a puperal a sepsis, and also um, um, yeah, puperal sepsis, for example, endometritis as a complication of this condition. So we have to look out for infection after um, the woman delivers. So that's how we manage um, draining or prom at term. Thank you so much for listening and see you in the next one.